The Galaxy S20 Ultra 5G might just be the most top-of-the-line, highest-end Android flagship we've ever seen, with the best specs and longest name. Is it worth the $1,400, though? We probably already know the answer, but let's chat as to why. Inside the box, we get the USB-C to USB-C charger, some USB-C corded headphones, and a clear protective case. Gotta love free protection. Let's get started. Now, remember, this Ultra is Samsung's premium flagship for the moment, priced at $1,400. There are still the regular S20s, of course, at the more reasonably unreasonable $1,000 price point. This review is going to be all about Mr. Premium here. Samsung seems to be really liking the soft screens these days. Luckily, when I peel off this screen protector, the display underneath doesn't die, like we saw in the Galaxy Z Flip. Let's see if Samsung remembers how real glass is supposed to act. We'll take a look at the large camera bump in just a second. I've personally been using a Samsung phone for the past four years or so as my daily device, so I am a pretty big fan of the phones that Samsung makes. Usually. As long as the advertising is pretty close to what gets delivered, and we aren't robbed at the checkout, I'm pretty easy to please. With the S20 Ultra, we start seeing scratches at a level 6, with deeper grooves at a level 7. It's nice to see glass again. This phone will be able to handle everyday objects and fingernails without getting scratched or dinged up. My razor blade does no damage to the top 40 megapixel selfie camera. The earpiece is up here as well, in it's super thin slit. There's no speaker grill to scratch or get damaged. I'm a fan of this flatter screen design as well. If the phone ever gets dropped, the frame is going to be what gets hit instead of the glass, which is good, because glass is glass and glass breaks. Metal, however, might scratch, but won't shatter. The power button and volume button are made for metal and can still be removed. I don't recommend stealing other people's phone buttons, but if being a terrible human is your thing, the option is available. There are no buttons on the left side of the device, nor on the top, but there is a SIM and SD card tray. Thumbs up to Samsung for keeping the expandable memory alive. This guy can hold an additional one terabyte of storage with a normal micro SD card. This slot helps future-proof the phone which is pretty important considering that $1,400 starting price point, and how long you're going to have to keep using it to pay it off. The bottom of the phone has a little clear plastic protector to keep it from rubbing inside the box. The bottom stereo speaker and USB-C port are down here as well. There is no headphone jack. Let's take a look for a second at the main selling point of this S20 Ultra, and that's the camera. This boy is thick. For people outside the United States, the rise is about 2.4 millimeters tall. For people inside the United States, it's a bit thicker than a quarter, yet also still pokes out above a toothpick. The hump is a decent sized fraction of a fruit snack, and it's just about the same size as a slice of butter. I mean, if you think about it, the S20 Ultra has four cameras, one of which is 108 megapixels, and the other is the 48 megapixel telephoto camera. So the hump size is relatively reasonable. And if you look closely, you can see how much space that camera hardware actually takes up inside the phone. Check out how much room the 100 times space zoom periscope camera actually needs. So that size of the exterior glass lens does match the dimensions of the hardware below it. Happy to announce my teardown skins with dbrand are officially back. We managed to hoard enough printer ink to hopefully keep them around long term this time. We're covering a lot more phones with this batch, and there are now two different styles of teardown instead of one. You can see what they both look like on this grip case. The original version on the right looks like it still has the shiny glass layer on the back. Or we have the new ultra matte version, which looks like you're just holding the bare circuit boards. Personally, I kind of like the glossy version. True story, I've had the teardown skin on my phone since our last batch, and a stranger came up to me in public legitimately concerned that my phone was falling apart which means our skin is definitely doing its job. I'll leave a link for the teardown skin down in the description. 
Of course, I am getting ahead of myself. This is a durability test video and not the teardown. But there is one more thing. We also tore down MacBooks. Starbucks won't know what hit them. You can see the dual fans with the batteries, and my favorite part, even the trackpad has its own see-through teardown protection. You can see the copper windings for the Taptic motor underneath. There's a good chance we have a skin for your phone in your hand right now, and we'll be adding more devices as the time goes on. Link is down in the description. You're not going to want to miss this one. Now, don't get me wrong. The Ultra is a cool phone, top of the line and all that jazz, but it's not really doing anything that we haven't already seen before. We saw the 108 megapixel camera already in the $500 Mi Note 10, and that periscope zoom camera we saw inside the P30 Pro, which also currently costs around $600. Both of those phones with similar features are less than half the price of this Ultra phone. Samsung has also taken their S20 series and made 5G mandatory this time around, and they charge a premium for it. 5G coverage still isn't even a thing yet for half of the United States, and the millimeter wave, the super high speed portion of 5G, is currently covering basically nobody. The 5G phones are still very premature, and paying a few hundred dollars out of your own pocket to sponsor futuristic 5G tech you can't utilize is very much not worth it here in 2020. Unless, of course, you do live in a large city and know for sure that the millimeter wave 5G system is right outside your window. Basically, the $1,400 Galaxy S20 Ultra is made up of components that we can find in other phones that cost half the price, and includes a 5G system that most people can never use. Sometimes verbal burns hurt the most. The 1440p AMOLED display lasted about 30 seconds under the heat from my lighter, and did eventually recover. The screen is also capable of 120Hz refresh rate at 1080p. We first saw this tech on the ROG Phone 2 that's currently selling for $500 to $600 on eBay. Just another reason why this phone shouldn't be costing $1,400. The S20 Ultra is using the underscreen ultrasonic fingerprint scanner we saw debuted last year on the S10. I'll set my fingerprint first before adding some level 7 deeper grooves to the screen. And even with this additional artwork, my phone was able to sense and read my fingerprint every single time. The ultrasonic fingerprint scanners are safe from scratches. I tried bumping up my exposure so we could get a look at the transparent pixels that surround the rectangular fingerprint scanner inside of the phone, but it looks like we'll just have to wait until the next video to see how big it is. The rectangle is still currently invisible. Samsung hit it well. Finally, it's time for the bin test. Honestly, with how rock hard and rigid Samsung phones usually are, I was surprised that this thick phone had a little bit of give to it. It's the subtlest of sways, of course, probably due to the length of the phone and its 6.9 inch screen. The S20 Ultra does survive my durability test, however. No cracks, kinks, or permanent damage anywhere. All I'm saying is, if I had $1,400 in my pocket, first of all, I wouldn't spend it on a cell phone, but if for whatever reason I had to, it would not be this one. The S20 Ultra is a Frankenstein conglomerate of parts found in many other much cheaper phones, and it doesn't bring anything new to the table. If I wanted a top-of-the-line phone that screamed 2020, I would get the Galaxy Z Flip. Even with its fragile screen, its futuristic design and form factor warrant the $1,400 price point, way better than this S20 Ultra does. Either way, everyone is different, but the one place you can't go wrong is with a teardown skin. Link is in the description. Let me know what you think. Tell me your thoughts on the S20 Ultra down in the comments, and come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.